Uh, welcome back. Barotsaland, the kingdom of the Lozi people, was a protectorate under British colonial rule and became part of, the, uh, of Zambia at the country's independence in 1964. The area is now known as Western Province. There are approximately 5 million people living in Barotsaland. In terms of the Barotsaland Agreement of 1964, the area became part of Zambia. It's alleged that Zambia did not comply with the terms and conditions of that agreement, and therefore rendering it null and void. In 2012, the districts of Barotsaland resolved to be separated from Zambia, and they started advocating for their right of self-determination. In 2013, Afumba Mombotwa was sworn in as the Administrator General of Barotsaland in defiance of the Zambian government's jurisdiction over that area. Subsequently, three of Barotsaland Kingdom leaders were arrested in December 2014 on charges of treason, and they were tried and convicted in March 2016 and sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. In April 2018, they lodged an appeal against both their conviction and sentence, but their appeal has not been heard. Now I'm joined in studio by Secretary General of Lunina Ndambo Youth League, Chris Lubasi, and Kala um, Luka, uh, or rather, and the League's uh, Secretary of, for International Relations, Bright Nyame. Um, gentlemen, let me welcome you. I'm not even going to try and repeat your names, but um, just feel welcome. Yes, yes. Right now, let's 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 talk about this Barotse land story. Um, all of a sudden, come 2012, you trying to resuscitate something that happened in 1964, and I mean, I know that there were monies that were uh, that disappeared to the tune of about 78 million euros or pounds. Was it because you were broke? No, naturally, it's because the Zambian government, as a partner in, uh, to the 1964 Barossan Agreement, uh, behaved dishonestly uh, by looting uh, the 78.5 million British sterling pounds, mm. uh, which were in the Barros Reserve Bank unilaterally. And uh, uh, these acts, uh, unilateral acts by Zambia, uh, you know, began in 1965, barely a year after entering into an international arrangement with Barrosland in Britain. Yeah. So that continued up to 1969 and when they were uh, able to repeal uh, certain provisions of the agreement against the spirit of the people of Barrosland. And in 1969, the spirit of the agreement was defeated in that the whole of the agreement was uh, abolished by the Zambian parliament. Okay. Now, Chris, t t t just tell me, um, w w why wait so long? Um, the people of Barrosland are a peaceful people and they're civilized. They believe in uh, the post liminum doctrine uh, of, of solving their problems. It's not, uh, you know, uh, that uh, their quietness uh, means, uh, you know, they cannot do anything, but they're civilized enough uh, to wait until all measures, um, um, you know, to secure their country uh, seem to fail. That's when they can, you know, se secure other means from somewhere. What I'm noticing, though, is that um, you are fairly young um, uh, comrades, if I may say so. Um, is, are, you, are you taking up a struggle which your forefathers and your fathers and grandparents uh, failed uh, to conquer? Um, well, l l let me hear from you. Uh, yes, um, you'd, you'd find that uh, most young uh, people yeah. are the ones who are active. Yes, and uh, the old one, they give guidance okay. to the young ones. Yeah. Yes. But, right, listen, um, th th there has to be a, a reason why Barotsaland was annexed, if one may uh, say so. Because other annexures in the world caused world wars. But in your case, an annexure caused... Nothing but a peaceful demonstration for 40 years and you praying to God and all. That's what your manifesto says. You always rely on God for guidance and all that instead of fighting for your land. Yes, yes. Uh, we are very civilized people and we have that patient and we believe that uh, just achieving greater things doesn't matter of fighting. But even involving the brain and... Uh, 
thinking, you sit down and they resolve issues. Okay, what do you want the government of Zambia to do? Um, we want the Zambian government to recognize that they have no legitimacy over Barros land. Okay, they have refused to do that for the past 40 years. No, we have international law and we abide to that. They are not respecting it. We, 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 we no, appeal to the international community to come uh, you know, and help and intervene in this issue. They have ignored you for 40 years. No, we have solutions then. Because if peaceful calls for peaceful in, in disengagement processes fail, then we we you know uh, left to to choose you know our own methods of solving this impasse. But I believe they've not yet you know I mean failed the, the, the this issue. This matter has not even gone to the United Nations. It, uh, it it has gone. It has gone. There's no resolution. Uh, maybe they are still investigating, but uh, maybe. Uh, but no, we they are still investigating, but uh, it has gone so far. Well, other stories, I mean, this are, was our Wira uh, people uh, are recognized at that level. The Palestinians are recognized at that level. Who uh, are you? We are sure that they will recognize us. When? Uh, just now. We let me You're still praying? Uh, <laughs> no. Let me chip in. Um, the, the issue of Barros land has been tabled by international tribunals. Yeah. We here in 19, we know in 1994, 1996, uh, his late majesty, King Lute Yeta IV, uh, brought this issue to the attention of the Commonwealth. But uh, we hear the authorities then did many processes to hinder the discussion, the progression of the discussion uh, towards solving but uh, you, you the issue. So it's, it's I mean, uh, whatever we're doing, uh, we are, you know, updating the international community. As you may be aware, there is a government in Barros land and yeah, uh, which is not recognized by the government that is recognized by the African we, Union. We are not waiting uh, for Af African Union to recognize us. We are not waiting for the Zambian government to recognize us. You know, we, we, we only want civilized people who are able to call uh, insanity as insanity. You know, calling a spade as a spade is what we need here. If there, is, uh, there are some people in the world who can come and say this is right, this, the Barros people have been downtrodden and oppressed on the basis of an agreement that it never entered into force those are the people we we, we we need to talk about but and why do you need other people from outside to come and tell you that you must be free we be, we are already free what is you happening are not. we are free what is just happening these are mere formalities it's an argument of who has power over our country we have our government according to the I mean, norms and regulations of you know the Barros people you know but if that was the case uh, Brian, yes. if that was the case mm -hmm. Your fellows wouldn't have been uh, arrested and sentenced uh, on cha uh, treason charges. Yes, but... Um, so it means that they have transgressed the laws of Zambia. I in fact, on that one, they are just uh, trying to violate human rights. No, they are not trying. They are violating human rights. They are violating human rights, actually. Mm. Because we are free already. We declared... Um, a free uh, total independence from disengagement from Zambia yes. and uh, they have not challenged that it is too valid they have accepted that do you use passports to grow go from uh, Barotso and into Zambia let me step in. No, um, at the time being, uh, there is no need for that because we still have this argument going on of who has power over our country. But, you know, sovereignty belongs to the people. You know, we, you know, we were connected to Zambia on express terms and conditions. When Zambia refused that, we, we have methods, we have another option f to restore our own country and we don't wait for Zambia to nod. But prior to 1964, sure. you were colonized. We were not colonized. Mm -hmm. Our express uh, connection with any foreign powers was um, regulated since uh, uh, you know, the 19th century yeah. when the explorers and missionaries came to Africa. Yes. You know, the first encounter of the Barossi people with aliens and foreign powers was uh, through agreements like uh, the Lochna Concession of 1890 by His Late Majesty King Lewanika. So this has been the trend of the Barossi people. We were a protectorate. And what is surprising is Zambia was simply uh, inheriting the obligations of the British crown of the Barossi land. But the president never inherited the powers of the Litunga. But what we see is the, the president uh, you know, assumed the responsibilities of the Litunga and even went to an extent of colonizing Barros land, okay. a black-to-black colonization, and that's what we, we are refusing. Okay.
Um, today's president um, in, in Zambia is what? Is the what? The fifth, sixth? The sixth president. Okay. So for it's even worse because uh, under uh, KK that was like almost 30 years. So you have failed to convince six leaders that you need to be independent. Um, I'm sorry, we have not failed. You know, okay, how, how you have can not succeeded. We have not. We, yeah, to some extent, we failed to succeed because we were failing to satisfy the requirements of the Zambian regimes. But the issue is, uh, you know, the issue of Barros land is, uh, uh, you know, threefold. It's a legal issue, it's a rights issue, and also it's a, you know, you know, an independence issue, a matter of liberties. So when you look at um, the issue of Barros land, uh, you know. You must understand to say it's not about the Zambian government being convinced of our existence. We do exist, of course, and our Five right to self-determination cannot be, you know, uh, undermined by anyone. But and Bright, why are you still relying on God to free yourselves from Zambia when you are five million? You know, we like I have just said that we are peaceful people. Uh, we, and we but don't peace want. Peace has not brought you anything. Uh, it will bring. It will bring. When we are very much uh, confident that uh, this is the reason why we are calling on the international community to intervene. Okay. Yes, so that they see uh, how Zambia has uh, treated, mistreated us uh, regarding of uh, even uh, violating the human rights. And uh, as I'm speaking to you this time, uh, the Zambian government has deployed the armor. In, uh, in in Barosland. Okay. Yes, the schools, they've been camping, I mean, soldiers are camping on the schools, they are raping, I mean, they are, they, they are raping our pupils. They are, they're just, there's no peace in Barosland, as I speak now. Okay. Yes. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Um, it's, it's a matter that I would still want to, to engage you on, because there's, there's a lot of things that you're blaming on this integration into Zambia, the social cohesion, there's no peace and all that because you believe it's because, uh, I mean, uh, you, you are um, annexed, so to say. But we wish you all the best. Um, but you would have to do more than just praying um, in order to, to really realize your freedom. In fact, we are even appealing to the South African government to come in, uh, especially President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa being the, the Sadiq chairperson, okay. because yes. we believe Always something can be done. All the right. people of South Africa and the people of Barossa share a common history. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes. Well, that was Secretary General of Linyungandambo Youth League, Chris Dubasi Kalaluka, and the League's Secretary for International Relations, Bright Nyame. And um, Pearl, what have you got? Well, I'm at the back of that. We'll take a quick break and we'll return with more news at the top of the hour. Do stay with us here on The Globe.